Hi guys! Magandang araw po sa inyo lahat. This is me, Sean from Pipa Tabo Sean. And this video is the fourth video of this lecture series in the field of soil science as you prepare for the upcoming uh, board examination for agriculture. So this video we are going to talk about soil weathering. And before we are going to talk about soil weathering, uh, let us first review the first three videos that I already made. So, sa unang video, uh, we talk about soils and its functions. And then the second video and the third video, we talk about the different uh, factors affecting soil formation, which is all about the chlorp. Uh, and hinati ko siya into dalawang videos kasi medyo malaki yung topic na yon. So, the second video, we talk about uh, the effect of climate, living organisms, and relief on soil formation. And the third video, we discuss about uh, the effect of parent materials on time on soil formation. So, yun yung first three videos. And then, this is the fourth video, and we are going to talk about... Uh, Soil weathering, this is the process wherein the rocks are being broken down and turned into small pieces until it becomes soils. So I am so excited to uh, share my knowledge about this topic. And before I um, discuss about soil weathering, I just want to say thank you to all of you who watch my videos and who subscribes to my videos. Ang laki ng pasasalamat ko sa inyo kasi... Uh, my subscription rate has already been increased and because of you, I am so much grateful. If you are new to my channel, please click the subscribe button and it will help me a lot. And by the way, uh, the next video will talk about uh, the soil physical properties. I prepared my PowerPoint presentation ko and as soon as I'm ready with it, I'm going to make video about soil physical properties. Thank you very much and see you later. Bye! Welcome again for this fourth video about uh, soil science. And today we're going to talk about soil weathering. So, ano nga ba yung soil weathering? Soil weathering is the process by which soils, rocks, and minerals at the earth's surface get broken down through physical, mechanical, and chemical breakdown into other soil components. So, yung weathering is a very integral part of soil development kasi ito yung unang process uh, where how the soil is being formed. So, depending on the soil forming factors in an area, weathering may proceed rapidly over a decade or slowly over a million of years. So, iba-iba ang weathering process ng bawat uh, rocks kasi iba-iba din ang kanyang mga factors na Naka-affect nito. So, if the factors which we talked on the previous videos like the climate, living organisms, relief, paired materials and time have been the same on the landscape, the soil will be the same. Pero, pag merong isa sa mga factors na ito ang nagkakaiba, you can expect and you can have a different soils. Now, soil weathering occurs by both chemical and mechanical process. It de combines the process of destruction and synthesis. So, merong destroy, na destroy ng mga particles. And there's also the synthesis or merong ibang na form. So, the original rocks and minerals are destroyed by both physical disintegration and chemical decomposition. And this physical disintegration breaks down rocks into smaller rocks and eventually into sand and silt particles that are commonly made up of individual minerals. Pero, this process, guys, did not happen 10 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago. It takes time and even it can be made more than 1,000 1, years depending upon the factors in the area. So, soil weathering, as I mentioned, uh, it involves the decomposition or the breakdown of particles of the rocks through chemical processes and it releases materials and synthesizes new minerals, some of which are resistant end products. 
So, because of uh, merong na-destroy, merong mga reaction na nagaganap, meron din namang mga minerals at saka uh, ang mafoform from either minor chemical alterations or by complete chemical breakdown of the original and resynthesis of new minerals. So, and during the chemical changes, particle size continues to decrease and constituents continue to dissolve in the aqueous weathering solution. So there are different types of weathering. So isa-isa, uh, i-discuss natin yan mamaya. So we have here, so we have physical weathering, biological weathering, and we have chemical weathering. So when we say physical weathering, it involves uh, that rocks get broken into smaller pieces, pero yung chemical composition niya is still the same. So those are physical weathering. Yung, yung formation lang niya, yung physical structure lang niya yung nade-destroy. But then the chemical composition is not changed. The second type of weathering is biological weathering. This is caused by living organisms, for example, the roots of the plants that grow into cracks and force cracks to open or burrowing of animals. So those are the biological weathering. And we also have chemical weathering, which uses chemical reactions to change rock and will form a substance made up of new elements. So ka, yung, yung difference ng physical at saka chemical weathering, in chemical weathering, it changes now the chemical composition of the rocks. And also, since nag change yung chemical composition niya, some of the physical uh, appearance of the rocks are also affected. So, nag-break down din siya physically. So, types, uh, so we have here the physical weathering. So, we mentioned that the physical weathering involves the destruction of rocks into smaller particles without changing the chemical composition. There are different processes of physical weathering. Number one is freeze or thaw cycles. So, ano nga ba itong freezing at saka thawing cycles? But before that, uh, I don't know kung naka, nakapag-try na kayong mawa ng ice, ice water. Kasi uh, nung before kasi kami, meron kaming tindahan sa bahay. And isa sa mga binibenta namin is yung ice water or ice, ice. Kasi... Marami sa aming mga kapitbahay yung bumibili ng yellow ice para pang dagdag sa kanilang tubig at saka sa kanilang mga soft drinks. So, pansin nyo, kung naka-experience na kayo nito, balutin nyo yung gumawa kayo ng ice water uh, gamit yung ice wrapper. Tapos, ilagay nyo siya sa freezer. Kung napapansin nyo, pag nag-frozen na yung ice water na to, lumalaki siya. Naging tambok, anong tawag yun? Mataba. Tumataba yung, tumataba yung ice water pag nag-freeze siya, pag iniligay natin siya sa freezer at naging frozen na siya. Kasi yung ice dyan ay nag -e expand So this happened during the, this is happening pag during sa freezing at saka thawing cycle. So what happened here is, is that it occurs when rainwater or snow melts collects in the cracks in the rocks. So, merong rainwater or merong snow na nagmamelt. So, syempre, yung mga rocks na dyan, mayroong mga cracks-cracks na, na, na nangyayari dyan it, through time. So, pag nagmamelt yung snow or yung rainwater, it goes, it seeps down into the cracks. So, pumunta siya dun sa cracks. And then, at night, the, the temperature decreases. So, lumalamig. And the water freezes and expands. The increase in volume of the ice exerts pressure in the cracks in the rock, causing the rocks to open. And during the day, the ice melts and water goes deeper into the cracks and gets frozen again until the whole rocks gets broken down. Kasi nag -e expand ulit yung ice during freezing. So ito yung tinatawag na freezing and thawing cycles. So here we can see the uh, the visual effect of uh, freezing and thawing cycles. So here, syempre yung mga rocks na yan, may mga cracks dyan. So water seeps into cracks and fractures into rocks. So when the water freezes, 
So, nag, nagiging frozen yung water, nagiging ice siya, so nag expand siya. So, lumalaki siya, it expands about 9% in the volume, which wedges apart the rock. So, dahil sa nag-expand yung kanyang size, nagpupush, pinupush na yung dalawang side ng rocks until lumalaki yung, yung, rock, yung crack hanggang sa nagbe-break na yung rock into pieces. So, it does not happen only until one cycle. So, paulit-ulit na nangyayari. So, paulit-ulit siya. It is a cycle. So, with repeated freeze thaw cycles, rock breaks into pieces. So, same also for this video down. So, yan siya. So, kita nyo, uh, meron siyang crack na, lumalaki na yung crack niya sa taas kasi mas nauna yung nag-crack dun sa taas hanggang sa yung water, nag uh, nagsisip down through under, hanggang sa nag-crack na rin yung sa ibang ibang part, lower part ng rock. And then, after few years, after few years, nag-crack na yung ibang parts hanggang sa lumiit ng lumiit yung kanyang structure. Hanggang later on, maybe million of years later, yung rocks na to ay magiging sand, magiging silt, and then magiging clay. Then we'll go to the second, second process, which is abrasion. Ano ba yung abrasion? Abrasion occurs when one rock bumps against another rock. So, nagbabanggaan sila. So, what happened here is that the gravity causes abrasion as a rock tumbles down a mountainside or cliff. Siyempre, pag gravity, yung ibang rock dyan dahil sa sobrang bigat, nagiging uh, nahuhulog siya and then it will bump again another against another rock. Aside from gravity, also moving water causes abrasion as particles in the water collide and bump against one another. Uh, sa dagat, for example, yung mga rocks na nakikerry doon, during the waves or during the movement of water, nagkukosya abrasion to, to water and it causes uh, some of the rocks bumping against each other. And also, aside from water, strong winds carrying pieces of sand and sand blast can also sandblast surfaces. So, yung sa picture na to, for example here, uh, we have here uh, the wind. We have here wind. So, we have, on the first picture, we have here the rock. And then you can see wind, wind carrying sand particles. Yung mga sand particles na yan, nag, uh, it goes directly to the rock. So, yun. Siyempre, dahil sa constant na constant na uh, bumping ng sand particles sa rock later on yung part yung side na yan ng 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 rock it will become polished so kasi nababangga siya ng nababangga ng mga ibang sand particles nagiging polish na yung kanyang face nagiging ma makinis na yung kanyang face and then later on you can see the physical structure of the rock is also affected so yan kung before malaki pa siya later on lumiliit na siya hanggang sa nag-iba na yung kanyang, yung kanyang form. And sometimes it can also rotate and it can also affect the other side of the rock. So the other way how abrasion happens is that when ice and glaciers carries many bits and pieces of rocks, the rocks embedded at the bottom of the glacier and scrape against the rocks below. In here in this photo, and because of constant heating against each other or bumping against another rock, abrasion makes rocks with sharp or jug edges smooth and round. So here, uh, you can see in this photo, these are the rocks on a beach worn down by abrasion as passing waves cause them to strike each other. And in the long run, later on, after few, after many years of uh, bumping with against each other, it will now produce rocks with smooth and round surfaces. Then another type of weathering is the biological weathering, which is caused by living organisms wherein the roots of plants grow into cracks and force cracks to open. And sometimes uh, it is also due to the burrowing of some um, animals into the rocks. So here in this first photo, you can see here, uh, the roots of the trees causes rocks, uh, cracks to some rocks and later on 
it will produce a lot of rocks and later on those cracks will become bigger and bigger until the whole rock is going to be physically uh, uh, destroyed and turned into smaller pieces. In the second photo, you can see here uh, some holes. Here, uh, some animals bore into rocks for protection either by scraping away the grains or secreting acids to dissolve the rock. And later on, through, through these animals, uh, it can cause now some physical uh, weathering of the rocks, which affects the, uh, the structure of the rock and turns them now to, into smaller pieces. In the third picture here, you can see here, some of the lichens or bacteria and algae uh, grow in the rocks and help them break down the rock on which they live so they can get the nutrients they needed so here later on it, it takes a lot of a lot of years guys and then later on uh, because they are producing some chemicals those chemicals that they produce can cause now um, different reaction to rocks wherein some of the minerals from the rocks are going to be uh, released and react with other other minerals and it will now cause weathering of rocks so those these are the effect of um, living organisms on the weathering of the soil. So this is biological weathering. Then we have now the third type of weathering, which is the chemical weathering. Here, the chemical composition of the rocks has been altered or changed. So nagbago na yung, yung composition niya, chemical composition. And this is mainly because of the rainwater. Rainwater always plays a part of this process. So for example, carbon dioxide dissolves in rainwater forming carbonic acid which dissolves limestone rock which is carried away in solution as calcium hydrogen carbonate. So we are going to tackle here different kinds of um, different processes of chemical weathering. So where does it occur, the chemical weathering? Chemical weathering happens mainly to the top layers of rocks. And since I told you it needs water and occur more rapidly at higher temperature. So those uh, countries or areas with hot and humid areas, like uh, with damp areas and with lots of rainfall, you can expect chemical weathering to happen there most of the time, uh, predom uh, dominantly happening there. So, especially hydrolysis and oxidation in the chemical weathering is the first stage in the production of soils. It takes many years to see the results of chemical weathering, so mata matagal na process yan. Then we have here different processes of chemical weathering. Pasansya na guys, I am not so fond. I have a love-hate relationship with chemistry. When I was in high school, uh, uh, I was the officer and student body organization and because uh, I don't really yeah my love for chemistry was not really that developed and uh, maybe because uh, nung time namin pag nagmi meeting yung SBO namin tina timing nila during my chemistry classes so of course I was exempted from attending the class my grades are good but then the knowledge that I gained from missing those uh, chemistry class was uh, was not good. So, it doesn't matter if uh, mataas yung grade mo as pag hindi mo naman naintindihan. So, still no pa rin. So, I would prefer getting a low grade or average grade and yet you understand the concept and you understand the how the subject works. So, I will try my best to explain these chemical reactions as much as possible and as easy as possible. So, um, Mahina ako sa chemistry, guys. So, I don't know how to balance those equations. So, pasensyahan nyo na. But I will try my best. Okay. So, for the processes of chemical weathering, there are different kind processes of chemical weathering. So, we begin first with hydrolysis. Ano ba yung hydrolysis? So, hydro, hydro means water, di ba? So, this is the breakdown of rock by acidic water to produce clay and soluble salts. So, the most common example of hydrolysis is Microlin feldspar in granite rocks. Granite rocks is an igneous rock, which changing is changing to clay. And this process is irreversible. Hindi siya irreversible. Hindi siya pwedeng ma-reverse. 
So what happened here in hydrolysis? So in this case, in hydrolysis, water plays a very important role. So water molecules splits into hydrogen and hydroxyl components and the hydrogen replaces a cation from the mineral structure. So you see here, from this chemical reaction, there is a water and then the water molecules splits the hydrogen and hydroxyl and it replaces now a cation from the mineral structure. So before, kung before is potassium yung nasa left side, ito ay nagiging hydrogen na siya on the left side and there will there is a hydroxyl component that is being produced. The second process of chemical weathering is oxidation and reduction. So oxidation and reduction is the breakdown of rock by oxygen and it combines with another substances and form compounds called oxides. So here, the minerals that contain iron or manganese or ferromagnesian minerals and sulfur are exposed to air and water. So air, oxidation, and the iron will oxidize and weakens the rocks, causing them to crumble. So here is, it is an any chemical reaction in which a compound or radical loses electrons. So for example, here is an iron oxide here, we produce here. So from this example, and then it produces, now it loses some electrons and uh, it forms another another mineral. So here there's an oxygen, the iron reacted to oxygen. And then here also, this is a formation of glutite. And we can compare it with the rust on cars. Siguro nakakita naman kasi kayo ng rust. Ano nga yan sa Filipino yung rust? Uh, sa amin, taya. Hmm. In Cebuano, we call rust as taya or in Filipino, we call kalawang. Kalawang sa sa sasakyan, for example, di ba? Or sa kahit na anong bakal. So, what happened here is, rust forms when the iron or steel in the cars reacts with the oxygen in the air and forms iron oxide. Siyempre, pag yung uh, bakal or yung any iron nag-react siya sa water or nabasa siya and then hangin, di ba? For example, so, may, may oxygen naman yung water. It will now react the iron will react now to the oxygen and it will form iron oxide. And as a result, the steel of the car can rust. Rust is quite brittle and can break easily. So same lang din sa kalawang na yan. So kung yung, yung sasakya natin ay kinakalawang, you can expect there na sa malaot madali, yung pieces ng ng iron na sasakyan nyo, pag kinakalawang yan, it will time, uh, there will come a time na masisira at ma hindi na siya strong. Yung mga very weak na yung, very weak na yung uh, steel na, or steel or iron na nasa sasakyan mo hanggang sa maging uh, madali na siya masira. So, nagiging brittle, nagiging uh, mahina, mahina yung, yung iron na yun. So, rocks with iron, Kasi syempre, di ba yung mga rocks naman, may mga iron naman yan na mga minerals or elements. Rocks with iron in them go through with a very similar process. The oxidation process will give the rocks a reddish appearance, very similar to the patina on car. And because of the iron uh, minerals that is present in the, uh, present in the rocks, when it reacted with oxygen, the iron will react with oxygen and it will form into iron oxide and sap. Sa madaling salita, yung iron oxide ay nagkukos siya ngayon ng brittle, nagiging mahina, ma, nagiging malambot na yung mga rocks hanggang sa later on, after a few years, nagiging mas madali na siya kanyang masira. Then we will go to the third process of chemical weathering which is solution or dissolution. In this process, the acidic water dissolves minerals in the rocks by hydrating the cations and anions until they become dissociated from each other. Or, soluble ions are retained in the underground water supply. So in this case, the calcium sulfate is hydrated with water, reacted with water, and you can see here that the calcium and the sulfate become dissociated from each other. 
And some of the water will go now to the become soluble ions and will go now downwards and can even retain in the underground water supply. The fourth process of chemical weathering is hydration. Hydration, it also talks about hy water, hydra, hydro. So here, the intact water molecules combine with a mineral. So in this case, the hematite mineral, which is um, the hematite rock, is a rock made up of iron ore, which is 70% iron, is weathered into ferrihydride. Ferrihydride. So this is the chemical formula of the hematite, and then it turns into ferrihydride. So in this case, the iron combines with the water, and it turns into another mineral. So here you can see, um, here is so, so hard. The, he the hematite is very, very hard um, rock here. But then when it reacts with water, it becomes, it becomes crumbled. And you can find here in the right picture, when it turns into ferrihydrite, it becomes rusty. And here you can find that some of the particles are broken down into smaller pieces. Then we have the carbonation, which is the fifth process of chemical weathering. In this case, the carbon dioxide and other chemicals from vehicles and factories, so it causes pollution, it releases some, some chemicals, particularly carbon dioxide, are released into the atmosphere. And when the rain comes down, it picks up these chemicals forming carbonic acid or mild acid rain. And this mild acid rain, acid rain when it pours down, it can erode rocks. So the example of this are limestone. Limestone creating caves, sinkholes, and unusual formations. So here, so here, this is the effect of carbonation. I am sure you are very familiar with some, uh, yung mga ribulto, for example, uh, monumento. Monumento sa in schools, di ba? Elementary school, meron dyang ribulto, for example, ni Jose Rizal sa flags. And you can find there na yung minsan yung mga Mukha ni Jose Rizal nag-iiba na after ilang years or after ilang, ilang, ilang taon. So this is the effect of carbonation. So the presence of carbon dioxide in water yields carbonic acid which accelerates chemical dissolution of minerals. So carbon dioxide dissolves in rainwater forming carbonic acid which dissolves limestone rock which is carried away in solution as calcium hydrogen carbonate. So kita nyo yung... Uh, this is the uh, statue of I don't know who. And uh, after a few years, you can find here that the, the face of the statue and even the arms and the figure has already been misformed. Misformed or nag na yung kanyang anyo because of carbonation in which the rainwaters react to the calcium carbonate, which is mostly one of the ingredients in making this uh, statue and through time pag dumaan na yung mat matagal na panahon re-react siya into the chemicals and then nag nadidissolve yung ibang parte ng mga ng statue so this is also the effect of carbonation same is true for the formation of uh, stalagmites and stalactites so yan yung ulan nagre-react dun sa calcium carbonate hanggang nagkakaroon ng formation ng stalagmites and stalactites in caves so i am very fond of caves and i it's how nature works and i really admire and it takes million of years to do that so to to have that one so fine ako ng caves then we also have the fifth process of chemical weathering, which is the complexation. It is not so um, talked about. And here in this process, this is tied to organic matter decomposition and results to production of organic acids. They provide hydrogen ions and form organic complexes or chelates, which removes cations from the mineral. So this is the chemical formula of muscovite. So very complicated siya guys, but then complication happens when there is a decomposition of organic matter 
which results to production of organic acids. So, the chemical weathering occurs fastest at the sharp edges of rocks as they have a large surface and less volume, so the chemical reaction are faster. And syempre, siya yung mas na-expose, kaya mas mabilis yung kanyang weathering processes. Gradually, uh, the sharp edges become rounded through time, and chemical weathering produces clays on which vegetation can grow. And this vegetation, after they become dead and decompose, Clay rock fragments of sand and silt so soil particles produce soil. So chemical weathering tends to weaken rock, thereby making it easier to break. So dahil merong mga chemical reaction na, nag, uh, na nagaganap, it will make uh, the rock weakens. And then yung physical weathering now will now become faster. So the physical and chemical weathering occur together. So magkasakasama sila usually. So here, physical weathering breaks rocks into pieces, so more surface is exposed to chemical weathering, which breaks it down further. And weathering is controlled li largely by climate, so the more water available, the more likely that chemical processes can proceed because most of the chemical processes uh, requires water to, to proceed. Additionally, in warm temperatures, chemical weathering can proceed even faster because it will speed up now the chemical process, especially when the temperature is high. So together with warm temperature plus water, this, the process of chemical weathering will become faster. In arid climates, uh, weathering process occur very slowly because of the lack of water. Although kahit mainit siya, but then because there's no water, the process of chemical weathering is less. However, because physical weathering relies on chemical weathering, it will also be quite slow in arid areas. So these are the four basic uh, process of soil formation. Una, there's a transformation. Transformation is transform, nag-iiba. So when soil constituents are chemically or physically modified or destroyed, and others are synthesized from precursor material. So, nagta-transform. So, may iba dyan na, na, na nagbe-breakdown. May iba namang nabubuo. So, nagta-transform siya. Then, another one is translocation. So, here, there is a movement of organic and inorganic materials horizontally or vertically across a pedon. So, merong pa, pa right, pa left, pa baba, or pataas na movement. And then we also have additions, and this refers to, there's an input of materials from outside sources. So maybe there's an accumulation of plant litters or dead uh, plant materials. So merong addition, so may nadagdag. And then we also have losses, may nawawala. So here, the materials that are removed from the soil by leaching or erosion. So these are the four basic processes of soil formation. So because of this, Nagkakaroon ngayon ng iba't ibang uh, mineral composition yung bawat soil. Nagkakaroon ng iba't ibang mga properties yung soil because of these processes. So these are the factors that retard soil profile development. Meaning, retard is pinapa, pinapalay, pinapahaba, pinapatagal yung soil profile development. Pinapatagal yung soil profile development. So una is, Low rainfall. Siyempre, kasi diba, nasabi ko nga kanina na most of the chemical reaction requires water. So, kung walang rainfall, kung walang tubig, mabagal yung development ng profile. And when there is also li li high lime content, high clay content, steep slopes, cold temperature, severe erosion, low humidity, high quartz, hard rock, high water table, pagbasap, usually constant deposition and mixing by animals. So these factors, pinapatagal niya yung soil profile development. And you can see here that climate has a very big effect on this formation um, profile development. So we have here low rainfall, low humidity, low temperature will retire 
retard the soil profile development. And biota means, um, this is a mixing by animals or men. Pag may mga tillage na nangyayari, syempre nagmi-mix yung, yung soil constituents. So, kaya nag, nag de delay din yung soil profile development. So, what happens to soil with time? So, after ilang years, we're talking here of de more than decades or maybe centuries or thousands of years, there will be loss of nutrients or bases because, syempre, yung mga minerals na nasa lupa, it will go downwards through time. So, dahil nawawala yung mga nutrients na yun, particularly yung mga bases, the, as the acidity of the soil will become, uh, the pH of the soil will become acidic. So, you will have now here a lower pH of the soil or soil becomes more acid. And then, there will be an increase of iron or soil becomes redder. So, color of the soil also uh, indicates and when the soil becomes redder, it also indicates that the soil is becoming more acidic because of high concentration of iron and oxides. And then we also have increase in clay content. Or old soils have more clay. Because uh, the rocks are uh, broken down into smaller pieces. And those smaller pieces will become into sand. Sand will become into silt. And silt will become into clay. So the more clay... Ibig sabihin nan, mas matanda na yung lupa because it undergoes long processes of weathering. And then there will be deeper weathering into the parent material. So hanggang sa nakaabot na siya dun sa parent material, not only dun sa topsoil or sa ibabaw na part ng lupa. So this is what happened to soil with time. So, nagkakaiba-iba kasi nga, depende dun sa soil forming factors which we discussed on the previous videos. So, I hope you learned from this topic. So, this is not so big topics about soil weathering and uh, I hope this can help you in your preparation for the upcoming licensure examination. Our next video, we will talk about um, the different physical properties of the soil. So, we will talk about soil texture, soil structure, soil bulk density, pores, all in all, which is about physical properties of the soil. So, medyo malaki siya. So, hindi ko pa tapos yung uh, PowerPoint presentation ko. So, siguro hatiin ko na lang siya para hindi ganun kahaba yung presentation. So, I'm going to end this presentation. Thank you very much for um, taking time to listen to this video. I hope meron kayong natutunan and see you again next time. And if you are new to my channel, please click uh, the subscribe button and it will help me a lot. Thank you very much and see you again next time. Bye!